Three board one public safety uh, meeting met two months ago, meeting again this month. Um, tonight's meeting should be a little bit shorter than than the rest. Um, so let's go ahead and kick it off with a roll call just to see who on the committee is with us. Uh, Lisa Bamonte. Gina Argento. Here. Bogdan Bakarowski. Gina Burrows. Here. Teresa Cincinnato. Giovanni D'Amato. Aaron Drinkwater. Arthur Dimonatsky. Lloyd Feng. Here. Uh, Moshe Indik. Bazina Kaminsky. Here. Uh, Yol Lando. Maria Lianza. Yol Lo. Maria Vieira. Robert Roger Capucci. Esther Juddelson. Here. Uh, Lindsay Pagano. And John Rosmus. Here. Awesome. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and, and get started. Uh, Trish, I think you're up first with supportive services and MedHelp's BHC medical and psychiatry services. Thank you. Yeah, good to have you. Um, I contacted uh, Community Board 1 on February 7th after receiving notice from Department of Health and Mental Hygiene that Hepatic Helps Inc., the parent nonprofit corporation 501c3, and our subsidiary, MedHealth BHC, will be moving forward with um, servicing all of Brooklyn and Staten Island for intensive mobile treatment. What this means is that we will, and it's our proprietary program that was awarded. It wasn't what was required, but because of our community outreach from June to September 2022, we determine what was needed through the rollout of this program. So um, 960 Manhattan Avenue would be our actual headquarters. Um, that's where my office would be, where all the executives would be held um, on the fourth floor. And MedHealth BHC will be on the first floor. On the third floor would be supportive services such as our Chance Academy Life Skills, and career training uh, center, uh, along with group facilitation for those that suffer with substance abuse, mental illness, and HIV, along with other cognitive therapy uh, sessions. Uh, fitness classes will be held at the park uh, close to 960 Manhattan Avenue outside during the summer months. And what the MedHealth BHC IMT program entails is that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, there will be transportation drivers with peer specialists that will be going around to targeted neighborhoods that include Greenpoint, Bed-Stuy, Williamsburg. Um, there's about 12 that's on the list for intense mobile treatment uh, to start soliciting those that are chronically homeless, sleeping in front of businesses. Uh, we also added a subway uh, team that will be mobile throughout the day um, and late at night to get uh, homeless people that are sleeping on trains overnight uh, in the Brooklyn lines and taking them to 668, uh, 668 Bushwick Avenue, which will be our 24 hour, seven days a week center. 960 Manhattan Avenue hours will only be to 9, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, and it's specifically for our domestic violence, sex crime, human trafficking, and LGBTQIA clients and patients. Uh, every other population we serve, which are aging out youth, young adults, uh, Veterans ex offenders will be routed to 668 Bushwick Avenue, and our intake and assessment center would be at 570 Nostrand Avenue. That's in the heart of this program. So we have specific uh, facilities that will be rolling out uh, this system, uh, but we wanted to let uh, Community Board One know what we were doing. 
uh, we really uh, was only required to give a notification, but I partnered up with all of the community boards across uh, where our facilities will be. And what I wanted to do is collaborate with myself and my executive team to give and provide the committee, if you allow us, monthly updates on the cleanup and things like that. And uh, meeting with community boards, seeing how uh, they can help us with information of where we could uh, saturate these programs if we don't launch uh, in the first quarter uh, to your satisfaction. But we have very intense schedules. That's what I was um, distributing to you about a month ago. And um, yeah, we were looking for a letter of support, not just a letter of notification as required by OASIS. Um, we have really structured uh, programming systems and it's gonna take everyone with all hands on deck to uh, bring vitality back into these Brooklyn neighborhoods, which we love. Absolutely, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for, for uh, bringing this to us and, and for all the, the work you're doing. Um, when did you say you're, you're gonna start launching? Well, the OASIS and DOHMH programs actually start the funding um, September 1st. However, we will be launching approximately by July 1st with our own funding uh, to get our foot in the ground of being on the resiliency committee for the city of New York and the mayor's office. I know how important it is to get a heads up. So we'll have our inspection uh, in August, but they will have a system that they can evaluate that at the time opposed to shadowing us when we're supposed to start. So we'll have about uh, 60 days head start. We'll be giving you notification along with OASIS and Department of Health and Mental Hygiene and OASIS will already know uh, that we would be launching a program with a soft launch and really getting into it um, September 1st. So we will be starting with our own funding at first. That's how uh, big of a crisis this is. That's amazing. And what what's the history of the company before this? I'm sorry? What is the history of the company before this? Oh, well, we started off with grassroots labor um, and we still do, uh, but we shadowed many big corporations like Samba, uh, Camba, Samaritan Village, um, those that uh, kind of led the way in these programs. And it kind of shaped the way that I designed these programs with evidence-based practices of what not to do, to be quite transparent. Um, we are culturally competent, but we're also linguistically and logistically competent based off of the experience, which is 170 years of cumulative experience um, in finance and behavioral health. Uh, myself, um, in business systems, that's what I do, uh, develop systems to solve problems. Um, with these evidence-based practices, we started off 2016, registered 2017, and became a 501c3 2018. So we've been at this a long time, shadowing and helping where we can, um, <clears throat> excuse me, at the time, Brooklyn Borough President Eric L. Adams took notice to our small rinky-dink mom and pop nonprofit with our volunteers, our doctors, laboriously, and he gave us uh, quite a bit of proclamations and citations. Um, when he discontinued the services across the board recently, I think we were one of the first on his mind because we left an impression um, in 2018 all the way to 2020 with the work we've done um, in agriculture and holistic practices and behavioral health in Brooklyn. Uh, so that's how we became here. We have evidence-based practices and when no one was looking, um, I, I think our metrics doubled those that were funded by the city and we weren't. Well. Uh, and, and I'm sorry, remind us again, how, what's the capacity of, of your facilities that, that open in September? 
Do you... They're going to be 15. Well, it's actually 960 Manhattan is uh, 19,000 square foot in total, but we are leasing 15,500 a square feet of that facility it used to be managed by Brookdale Hospital Center. They were one of the programs that were discontinued by the mayor. Uh, so we just, instead of rewriting um, and building out new programs with Greenpoint uh, having being seventh in the chronic homeless area um, in Brooklyn in the most populated areas, we decided to take over this facility is we could get just get started and it was previously article 28 article 31 and an oasis uh, which we're aiming to do got it um do you have an idea of, of numbers of intake just so we can we can have an aid yeah because we have supportive housing the way this works is although we would be intaking all that would be willing to come into the program, we can only physically give all units of service, which includes supportive housing of 27. Um, and the reason why is we have two hotels that we're leasing for supportive housing. So those that are chronically homeless outside of the substance abuse treatment that we're giving at 960 for the domestic violence, if they need uh, immediate shelter, uh, behavioral health transformations and they're living on the street, we have a unit for them waiting and the capacity is 30 per facility well, for male and female. So we amazing. have, it's about um, 83 uh, staff capacity at 960. It's 117 at 668 and it's 14 at 570 no string. Uh, by 2024, we will be a nonprofit corporation that is staffed at 394 people. Wow, congratulations. Thank That's you. <laughs> yeah, uh, committee members or members of the public, any thoughts? Or, yeah, go ahead, uh, Gina. I think you're muted though. This is very good news. Um, actually, um, this was number five in terms of priority on our district needs statement. Um, because especially we're in my section of Williamsburg, we do have homelessness and um, it seems like the, the issues with drugs have become far worse. Yes. Drug abuse. I mean, there were two people um, this past year who died of overdose of, of drugs. And That's what we want to prevent. We, we want to prevent and uh, we want uh, to provide them with immediate needs. Uh, so all of our facilities have showers, uh, kitchens, where we would immediately feed them um, before we drill them with questions, as well as clothing. So if they've been sleeping wherever, they're comfortable when we take the intake. And if they trust us enough, they'll go to our facilities in Park Slope and Williams. Oh, very good. No, that's good news. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions from the other committee members? Yes, I have a question. This is Bozina Kaminsky. Uh, how many people uh, you will estimate that you will serve uh, daily? Well, what will be the, the goal for, for your program? It's 27 per year. Uh, we, there will be about six staff members and uh, hepatic helps that would service one. And there will be eight for Med Helps Behavioral Health Clinics that will service one patient. So, depending on what division, um, we have Triple H, which we refer to them as clients. And for Med Helps Behavioral Health Clinics, we refer to them as patients. And if they're enrolled in our Chance Academy Life Skills and Career Training Centers, we refer to them as students. So, it depends on what division these. Uh, individuals decide to trust us with, but we do guarantee uh, placement for housing, uh, permanent housing that is, once they graduate at the end of the year for the annual award ceremony, where we would love to have uh, 
CB1 committee members attend each year. And that's the reason why you want to show the metrics along the way. And you will visually be able to see the difference in these uh, areas that chronic homelessness is spilling over. Yes, I think it was Lloyd that raised uh, his hand first. Uh, John can go first. I, I was just uh, saying, like, that'd be great to for us to attend um, yeah. that kind of concluding ceremony. I, I'll go after John. Okay, wonderful. John? Uh, um, hi, uh, my name is John. Nice to meet you. Nice um, to meet you. When, when, what are you doing in terms of outreach to make people aware of your services? Oh, they are aware. We have what they consider a street team. Um, to be quite honest with you and transparent, there are people anticipating this program on the street. Um, they're very excited. However, we do not uh, control the referrals, right? So the referrals come from Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, and we are allowed to take as many people in, but they have to be in the match list system. That's what makes this uh, very challenging. Um, we do have a supportive uh, affiliation with a lot of other nonprofits that have shelters that do not um, generally have uh, specialty services like ourselves. We deal with specialized populations specifically because they're the hardest to serve when they just say um, they're, um, I don't know, if they're a senior, there's so many programs uh, and they have no other component, like uh, they don't have HIV, they're not on substance abuse, and we just come across someone who's just a senior. Um, there, we would not turn them away. We would still be putting them through the system, uh, but they would not stay in one of our shelters. Uh, those are one person and the specialized population comes with the budget. And <laughs> we definitely have to utilize the budget for uh, what the program was designed for. But we have a network of uh, four shelters that those general population could be nav navigated for. So I, I would estimate for the next fiscal year, about 108 people will come through our program through the three facilities. But remember only 27 can have all of those uh, 24 units of service because they fall in either aging out youth, young adult, which makes up 63% of the homeless, chronic homeless population anyway. And veterans, ex-offenders, domestic violence, sex crime, human trafficking, LGBTQIA, which also makes up 63. They're all kind of cross component. And uh, that's why we chose them so we can see a difference and penetrate this problem. Well, thank, thank you very much and good work. Well, thank you. Uh, Lloyd? Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. I was curious about the specialized populations that you mentioned, but you seem to have um, elaborate on that. So I appreciate that. Um, I do have a question about uh, you mentioned cultural competence earlier as a mm -hmm. skill set that the staff will have. Could you like, you know, walk us through some of the skill sets that uh, like, like what that is in, in particular and then other skill sets? Well, this we would be here all day uh, because mm -hmm. this is the eight tier assessment. Um, that begins with comprehensive case management, um, medical immediately following that, mental health, fitness. Uh, most of these people would probably need two things, housing and jobs, and they definitely have to be physically fit inside out, mind, body, and spirit to sit through classes and then search for work. We can't just wave a magic wand. So all of these systems and uh, units of service are vital and the progression of the individual. Um, we also have legal, if there are justice involved, uh, that's gonna be major. If they're going through something uh, dealing with crime and their youth, they're probably not gonna be so, you know, concentrating on uh, certification courses to better themselves. They're gonna think about the now. Um, 
We do have academicians, 24 of them in life skills and careers uh, that teach them uh, life skills and financial literacy, uh, credit repair, uh, health hygiene, uh, culinary arts, uh, fitness, of course, as I just mentioned, as well as uh, career tracks in construction, cosmetology, um, administration, and a big one that kind of knocks it out the park for most of the people who view our services is technology. Uh, the young people in 2023 have taken over social media and they don't need older people like us telling them to because they know how to make money and that's it. What uh, our nonprofit uh, trained our academicians to do is not only to engage them in uh, their talent or skill set that they may have, because there's a lot of talent in homelessness, believe it or not. You would be surprised. Amazing. Um, but it has to be harnessed, it has to be developed, and they can monetize uh, their talents on social media through uh, becoming a content creator. What we do is making sure that they have social responsibility and film production, music, uh, oral communication, just being the better versions and the best versions of themselves they could possibly be. Um, but most importantly, uh, we do make sure that uh, our network of businesses, that's how we're able to really bring this cohesively together. And those business networks are making move business networks that are uh, community developers, landlords, you know, and the other spectrum are job providers like Kellogg's, who is also uh, looking to be one of our sponsors besides the federal government uh, for this program. Uh, we've been kind of catching a buzz for the last year and a half, even through COVID on a very mild, subtle scale. I'm very nervous about um, receiving so many different interests from all over the place when there's not enough concentration on the epidemic here in New York. I was born and raised in Queens and uh, my dad owned a property here in Brooklyn. And so I spent most of my summers here um, growing up and then I got married and moved away. Uh, and I was able to remove my son outside of the city uh, to get a better education and then uh, have him go on to college and become a film producer in California right now. I do believe that uh, sometimes the toxic environments can change and uh, be reflective on the behaviors of any individual, their environment. Uh, removing the person outside of their environments and showing them just a little how to do things differently, maybe hone in on what they love to do, but do it the right way. It can make a world of difference. And that's what we've been seeing in um, our success stories that still have uh, careers in our certification courses, uh, they're married, uh, they're off uh, substance, no relapses. And even though they're in smaller numbers, that we know what it takes to bring that out of someone when they're willful. Um, so we do have a very unique, talented group, very unique, talented group. I can give job descriptions. Uh, you know, we have 14 doctors that are staffed on our nonprofit, but cultural competence comes from the experience and empathy towards servicing these people, same as our case managers or cleaning attendants. That's what I mean with cultural competency. As far as language barriers, there is a new device and technology because we are data driven and technology driven. Um, time kettle, you can speak to any client with earphones uh, at the record speed, it's not, it, it makes Google translation looks like uh, garbage. 
you know, you literally, as I'm speaking to you, it translates um, any language from Bangladesh, Chinese, Japanese, Spanish uh, for those clients. And I actually use that for when I'm speaking to my global comrades and they're um, speaking other languages. So we incorporated it into our service and our staff is trained on time kettles. You can Google it, it's very comprehensive. Thanks. Esther, did you have something as well? Any questions? Any no, more thank questions? you for your, for your presentation. It's been very interesting to learn more. Yes. Um, and if you guys look to support hepatic health with MedHealth BHC, uh, again, I definitely would like to uh, start the program, obviously, as I mentioned, uh, July 1st, and then start following up with every community board for um, a monthly basis. Uh, with the other community boards, we're already booked into 2025, to be quite honest with you. So CB1 is the last one, um, but the save the best for last, right? And we will be looking forward to hearing what your summary is, what your reviews are for the presentation. And hopefully you would give us a letter of support with, um, I know there's a process for the executives. Um, I know it's not required, but for our program, that's what the nonprofit requires is a letter of support. So even though the government doesn't require, we require it. And then we can start scheduling like the other district managers and chairs and uh, public health and social committees, monthly meetings and presentations, which would be by myself, Dr. Wusu, our medical director. And um, it depends on what's happening during that month. Uh, it could be the superintendent of education or it could be, you know, you know, our education specialists, it, it depends. Uh, but we definitely want to keep uh, updates with community board one, seeing uh, what your feedback is uh, for the work we're doing. And hopefully you will see Brooklyn uh, become the city that used to have the most vitality and the most swag in all of New York City. I don't know what happened to it. Well, I think I speak for the committee when I say we're happy to support you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, of course. So for for your letter of support, do you just need a, a any anything in particular that you need from us? Well, it's just hepatic helps, med helps BHC. Uh, I could send over the verbiage and our a Brooklyn current address for the finance office, but this is for med helps BHC intensive mobile treatment. Uh, for Brooklyn and Staten Island and uh, Greenpoint Community View Board 1 will support uh, our initiatives, especially having our headquarters right there in your backyard. And um, I'm going to be completely accessible to you guys if you have some updates or any type of feedback, any suggestions. Please, we can't, we can't do this alone. And there's about 24, just so you know, there's about 24 other programs out there, but we're not concerned. Uh, substance abuse is a kind of revolving door and we wanna just stop some of that along with recidivism, you know, uh, to bring these numbers back down because it's really crazy in Brooklyn right now. I don't know. And then we have uh, a couple on top of that, asylum seekers that are undocumented. So that 2.6 million Brooklyn resident population probably is a little high as well as Staten Island at 475,000, probably a little higher, you know? So um, I would just need a letter of support saying that you support the program and that you know, we're collaborating. I will need, in addition to that though, a calendar, as many dates as you have available so we can start coordinating the schedules and I can start working with my executive assistant and administration team uh, to coordinate just like we did for this meeting. And I will be able to present and you guys, you're, we're all residents 
uh, we'll be able to see what's going on, even if it's not in Greenpoint, if it's in Dumbo, if it's, I don't care where it's at. We saw something, we should, and you know where we are, right? We're right around the corner or down the block. You can tell us. I don't want you to feel like, oh, it's their program. Well, just let us know we're all Brooklynites, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, Joanna, happy, happy to have... Uh... Trish, you to come back when we meet every other month and just fill us in and, and recap with us. Um, Joanna, for this, for the letter support, do we need to go through a formal vote? Or is this something that we can draft? Yes, you do. Because then okay. you will present it to the full board for the board members to vote on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do that. Uh, we can draft a letter and then bring it to full board. Um, so I'll run through the names. You guys go ahead and, and give your vote. Uh, starting with Lisa Bamonte. Gina Argento? Yes. Bogdan Bakaratsky. Gina Barros? Teresa Cincinnato? Giovanni D'Amato? Aaron Drink? Arthur Dibonatsky? Lloyd Fenn? Yep. Mike uh, Indeg? Vizina Kaminsky? Yes. Yolanda, Maria Lianza, Yolo, Maria Vieira, Roger Capucci, Esther Juddelson, yep. John Rosmus, yes, and William Vega. Uh, assuming, I'll let you jump in on this too. Um, I'm not a committee member, so. I'm but just for this, I, I think for this, okay. Just wanted to have that on the record. Awesome. Okay, perfect. And uh, Joanna, are we are we okay to have Trish just return to uh, all of our meetings moving forward? Yeah, that is fine. It's up to you if, if you want to have her. That that would be great. Um, uh, well, we just need dates from from you to have um, uh, to put it on the calendar. Wonderful. Um. I definitely would like to give updates to all community boards every month. Um, and this is a nine year procurement. So you're not gonna get rid of me too quickly. Uh, and let's see what we can do together to pump vitality back into our communities. It's very important for our children. Trish, thanks so much for, for being with us. Thank you. Thank you guys. I. Um, Wish to see you guys in a couple of months. You got it. We'll Great. see you then. Bye. Thank you. Deputy Inspector Fahey, are you with us? Yes. Good evening. Thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. How are how is everybody? Yeah, so um I'll just start off with the twenty eight day numbers. Uh, we're actually down about 25% in the major crimes. Uh, that's like 24 index crimes. We're down in every category except for grand larceny of auto, um, where we have four more crimes than we did in this 20 day period last year. So we're just up slightly for the year at, uh, 1 and a half percent. Um, we, we were spiking earlier in the year in grand larcenies. Uh, it's still a concern. Um, smoke shops are still a concern for us. Most recently, we've been using auxiliary officers to um, do some enforcement in the locations. We're also teaming with um, the sheriffs uh, to visit these locations and seize the illegal marijuana that's in there. So, um, and you know, most recently, we've actually enjoyed uh, a quiet period of time, which we're very happy about. Um, but we, you know, surrounding precincts are still experiencing gunpoint robberies. Uh, we did have a gun, uh, recovered, uh, from a car stop in, uh, on March 19th. So, you know, we know that individuals with guns are traveling through the community. Uh, the officers are doing their best to pull people over. Um, you know, we are still seeing the. Distraction scams, um, if you want to advise, you know, community members and your friends and family. Um, we are seeing elderly people being 
targeted. You may they may be told that there's something on their jacket. They're working in groups. Uh, they seemingly are trying to help somebody, but as they're distracting the person, they're reaching in, they're taking money. So, um, you know, we are paying visits to the payomatics, the, you know, different banks. They were initially targeting city banks. Um, so we're trying to have a greater presence at these locations. Most recently, we also have established um, an e commerce trade area right in front of the precinct. Uh, so we would encourage people that are doing Facebook market um, or craigslist trades anything like that they can do it right in front of the precinct and it's on film um, so hopefully you know if, if it's somebody that isn't willing to meet in in a safe area uh, i would say you know you not not to go through with it unfortunately we had an officer killed off duty when he went to purchase a car uh, in the 75th precinct so um, this is something that you know uh, impacts all of us even officers, uh, you know, who carry guns and, and should, you know, be able to keep themselves safe. So um, we encourage everybody to be very careful with these transactions. Uh, we're still seeing the identity thefts uh, and, and those types of grand larcenies as well as the, um, you know, CVS on North 6 that's been hit several times. So we've this week alone, it was hit twice with grand larceny. So we are increasing our presence over there as well. We still have the field training officers that are uh, deployed primarily along um, Barry and Bedford on the north side of the precinct. We'll continue to do that. And, and we do still see the um, nightlife grand larcenies where uh, people that are partying, they're, they're being pickpocketed while they're in clubs. So um, most recently, again, Good Room has struggled with uh, these grand larcenies and, and so has twins. So. Um, some of the other things that we're seeing, and again, they target around nightlife. They tend to target younger individuals. They'll approach somebody at two in the morning, three in the morning, and strike up a conversation. They'll say, oh, let me exchange my Instagram with you. And then they either take the phone completely or they're transferring your money while they're pretending to exchange Instagram or social media information with you. So, you know, this to combat that, we're having officers, high visibility in the area. Um, but these individuals watch, they wait and see, um, they strike up conversations with younger individuals that, um, you know, they may uh, have let their guard down because they've been drinking. Um, so these are the types of crimes that we're really seeing, um, certainly more property-based uh, than violence, which we hope continues through the year. Awesome, thank you. Um, could you clarify for us the role of the auxiliary officers and sheriffs at smoke shops? Yeah, so the uh, the auxiliary officers, um, where we use them undercover, we use an auxiliary officer that's under twenty one to go in and buy um, the cigarettes or the unlicensed marijuana. Um, so we're we're doing that on our own because the sheriff has so many of these smoke shops to get uh, to. The NYPD have been limited in their capacity to do business inspections, which is why we team up with the sheriffs who have greater reach under the law to be able to go in and do the inspection. So um, we are working in conjunction with them. We get notified when they're in the precincts, we send officers over um, and you know we work together and certainly we're prioritizing places where we've seen gunpoint robberies, where we know, um, you know, we're receiving intel that they have traps that contain weapons, um, things like that. So certainly Zaza Exotics that's over on North 6 has been um, a thorn in our side. Um, we've taken several arrests out of that place and we're, we're also exploring nuisance abatement. So we're working with the legal bureau to hopefully shut down some of these locations. Um, you know, once we have the third arrest in a six month period, we're able to then bring a civil action against the business um, and we have great success in shutting them down in order to open reopen. They have to stipulate to, um, um, you know, terms that now lock them into not engaging in criminal behavior. So, sorry, just to clarify. So, if there are 3 addresses on the same premise within 6 months, that's grounds for that that business being suspended. Yes. So, it's, it's, uh, it's the nuisance abatement law. Um, we used to do it a lot more frequently. Um, in different parts of the city. I actually, many moons ago when I was an underage uh, cadet 
working in the department, we were allowed to use cadets, but they got away from that because they were really college students and the safety issues. Um, so we still are allowed to use auxiliary officers. Um, but those are, you know, the three arrests in a six month period. Um, and, and in some cases, they don't even have to be arrests. The buys, um, we're working with legal that the incidents themselves may be enough. So, you know, we're, we're working very closely with our, our, um, our legal counsel and the legal bureau. So this is really a citywide problem. So, you know, things are changing, but we're being guided by them. Uh, you know, and we'll continue to prioritize if, if anybody has any, you know, the, on the board, if there's any locations that are um, particularly troublesome, if you're seeing anything that you want us to know about, please let us know and we'll definitely uh, prioritize the location. And are you still having issues with smoke trucks that are mobile? No, I'm just having the issue of getting that one like to the pounds, uh, the one that's outside the precinct and has been there. It looks like uh, it's not the uh, the best, uh, you know, appearance that we want to put forth. But, but uh, uh, we're working with that too. I have some phone calls in to hopefully get that unsightly truck out from the front of the precinct. Yeah, go Are ahead. There is there anything? Oh, I just had a quick question. Um, you mentioned the Craigslist um, location in front of the precinct. Are there specific hours? Is there some way for the community to be able to know about it or use it? And, and how can we help make aware? So we just that? recently submitted um, these locations formally. Uh, we were asked for them. They recommended you know places in front of the precinct. Um, I'm sure there'll be a public like education campaign coming out through our crime prevention division. Um, but yes, I mean, we'll get that out and publicized. We have a community council meeting coming up. So um, I'm certainly, you know, we'll, we'll put it out on Twitter. We just have to, you know, follow whatever guidance they want us to say. But, you know, even without that being officially declared, we're open 24 um, seven, you know, uh, unfortunately, the, um, the people that uh, mean harm won't agree to do that. You know, they're not going to agree to come into the precinct vestibule, but, um, you know, for the ones that, uh, are legitimate and they want to come in, we're certainly, um, open 24 seven to help out. As you say, it's not a good sign probably if they're not willing to come in. So maybe it's good enough to even suggest it, but thank it, you. It certainly hopefully will help weed out the people that uh, have ill intentions. I you had know, one I other. Sorry, one other question just around my my favorite topic of um, bikes and mopeds on sidewalks and places they don't belong. I know that we've talked about it a bunch, but just if there was any update. I know, uh, I believe that the community council is and DOT. I've seen some emails recently that they're working on spaces. Um, uh, as certainly for car share. Vehicles, so um, I, I don't have anything like concrete. We continue our enforcement. Um, you know, we write bikes and motorcycles all the time, uh, in addition to cars. Um, but I don't have any further. I know that this has been spoken about different, um, elected officials want this prioritized, especially in areas that it came up at our last community council meeting. Um, you know, but unfortunately, as long as there's a need and people keep uh, ordering these these vehicles will continue to be in the neighborhood. So um, we, we will try our best to make them, you know, act with consideration for the community. Um, you know, and, and we have our crime prevention officer, Officer Montalvo. He goes out and gives flyers, um, you know, to the groups of them. He goes to, you know, unfortunately, when they're business, they're independent contractors, so to speak. So we used to have much greater success when we knew it was, you know, Tony's Pizza, for instance, because you could go and hold the business owner accountable. This is a little bit more challenging. William, did you have your hand up? Yes, I just want to say uh, my appreciation to the, our, we're blessed with uh, the best deputy inspector NYPD has and her team. They're <laughs> always there, always engaging. So we appreciate uh, 94th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's very nice to hear and I appreciate it and I appreciate the community. Um, we did. I don't know if you heard. We did have a, um, um, a very serious accident over on Maspeth and Vandervoort the other day. Yeah. Um, a person took the light and 
wound up hitting into several cars and then hitting into a 70 year old uh, man who is currently in critical condition. So um, the bureau chief from the ADA's office came out. Um, obviously they asked us to wait. Um, they're working with our highway collision investigation squad to thoroughly investigate in the event that this turns into um, a, a death they're going to look for the higher charges. So um, they did investigate thoroughly. So we may have, um, you know, a, a higher charge depending on the outcome. Terrible to hear. Yeah, very, very sad. Committee members, any other questions for Deputy Inspector Faye? All right. Well, thank you so much for coming up. Appreciate you as always jumping in and, and updating us. Absolutely. Thank you. If you need anything, I'm always available by email or phone. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. You too. Um, okay. And for our last report, uh, P. O. Arendale from PSA three. You with us? Oh, yeah, I'm here. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. We'll turn it over to you for our last report. Thank you. Appreciate you guys having me. Uh, PR and Delta Community Affairs. Um, only update that I have for uh, NYCHA developments is uh, we had a string of uh, robberies in the area. Um, we had uh, three robberies, one domestic violence, and two uh, delivery. Uh, just want you guys to be vigilant when, uh, whenever you guys are going out, ordering food or anything like that, having delivered. Because these uh, delivery uh, drivers on their uh, electric motorbikes are getting robbed by uh, a couple of individuals. Uh, we do have a person of interest. Uh, the 90 detective squad is investigating and they do have a person of interest. So hopefully we can catch these guys and get these guys off the street so they can stop uh, doing these crimes. And uh, to piggyback off what the inspector said, yes, the, uh, uh, the signs and areas in our commands where we're going to be able to uh, help individuals with Craigslist and Facebook transactions and make it easier. So it's going to be throughout the city. So any command near you live will be uh, partaking in this new uh, adventure that the NYPD is trying to do. And that's pretty much all the updates that I have from the housing side of uh, that I know. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Committee members, any, any questions or thoughts? Sorry, just one. Can you, I didn't understand and maybe I, I just didn't understand the, um, the, del the delivery crime specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, so like, what is it? So pretty much the, the victims are the delivery, uh, the, the deliverers. So when people call to get the delivery uh, and they would come to the building to deliver food, these guys were attacked them, um, trying to take their motorbikes and uh, the food and the money that they have on them. So that's what the robberies that we have currently in the housing developments. Is this the same trend that, did you report this? I, I know this was in the 90th precinct as well for a few months where uh, restaurants would be called repeatedly to the same location. Is that the same trend or, or is it slightly different? Yeah. Yep. So actually the driver, the deliveries are actually coming to the development and going to actual floors. So we try to tell these delivery guys to stay in the lobby, stay where the cameras are and not go to actual people's apartments. So the danger is once they go into the building and then up to a floor. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for that. Another question also on the delivery crime is like, um, how has like communication with like any sort of delivery uh, people's like advocacy groups going? Like, I'm not sure if uh, the department or, or the PSA is connected with like deliveristas, which is like an advocacy group for uh, delivery guys. Um, I think they're mostly Hispanic, um, but I'm, I'm curious about that, right? Because this information is pretty important and I'm sure this stuff is happening in other parts of the city too. Uh, so for on our end, uh, we try to go to our local uh, delivery places like that we know of and where the victims are from, of course, and nearby stores like that. So my partner and I, we would go out to actual stores and uh, uh, information and pamphlets to give them safety tips and let the delivery drivers know not to enter the buildings, uh, have the people come out to meet them to a, a well-lit location, preferably if they see a cop in the area, come to where the cop is at and have them uh, do the tra transaction there. So that's what we've been doing on our end to get this and you know information spread out to the deliveries. Gotcha. And you're seeing this trend across all um, of your units. Yeah, that's right. coming on in a, 
out of our areas in the, that we cover in PSA 3. Any other trends that you're, you're seeing come up? Uh, right now, that's the big trend that we have right now. Um, William, Gina, Vizina, John. Hey. Oh, Gina, I thought you had one. I'm sorry. I can ask, sorry, one more. On the string of robberies, is there anything like that would tie them together or anything similar to anything anyone else has seen? So far, our and the similar factor with us is that they tried to take their uh, e bikes. So, in both instances, they try to take the e bikes from the delivery driver, push them off the e bike, and uh, actually try and pull the e bike away from them, like take the keys from the e bike and everything like that. So, that's where we can having the connecting factor in these right now. What was the number of, of incidences? So, for this month, I just checked for this month alone, we had. Uh, Two uh, e-bikes, well, delivery drivers, uh, robberies. You said, I'm sorry, I think you broke up on, on me at least. You said two? Yeah, for this month of March, uh, we had two for this month so far. Got it. Okay. Uh, any other final questions or, or thoughts? Okay. Well, thank you so much for jumping on as well. Appreciate it as always. See you in a couple months. Thank you. Um, okay. So, Joanna, correct me if I'm wrong, but for last order of business for um, our, our committee, I can draft the letter. I'll send it out to all of us. If you have any thoughts or questions on uh, on, on the letter support for, for HHH, uh, we can edit it together and then we'll send it to full board for approval. You you could do that. Uh, you have to provide, uh, provide a report. Um, to the to the board or either or report with the letter and um, the vote of the committee. Um, and uh, since there wasn't enough, it wasn't enough um, quorum committee members, right? It was a consensus uh, recommendation. Good to um, know. Okay. Okay. So you present to the to the board and you let them know that that was the vote. Awesome, William. You got your hand up. Yeah, I just want to let everybody know, as well as Joanna, uh, a couple of nights ago, we got a letter from DOT rejecting our request to have um, stop signs at Wood Point Row and Jackson. It goes in both directions. So I will be bringing this up to um, Jennifer's meeting tomorrow, which I met her in, a, in an event on Saturday. Um, but it's, you know, as Joanna can tell you, it is it is just waiting for someone to get maimed or killed. And they keep on using the city federal law. The same thing they do with the environmental meetings we have when they want it uh, or land use, you know, when the city wants to get things done their way, there's always federal law that says that we, we can't do anything. Uh, so I'm just letting you know, we're going to be talking about that at uh, uh, Jennifer's uh, meeting about, you know, unfortunately we had Morgan Avenue, uh, the tragedy with a cyclist, but again, it's like they're waiting for someone to die before they do anything. And we don't want to wait that long. We don't want to be like McGinnis Boulevard. You know, uh, uh, having a school teacher, beloved school teacher, die, and they were still waiting for that area, to, that boulevard to be designed. So just letting you know, and uh, Joanna, Joanna and I are neighbors, and she knows what I'm talking about. That is really bad. Even um, when I'm crossing the street with my daughter, you have to come out to the middle of the street to be able to even cross. Um, our na our neighbors you can see the cars coming. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the same fear our neighbors have crossing under BQE on Meeker Avenue. You don't do it unless you have to. So we have neighbors actually avoiding that intersection, going on Witters or still uh, Skillman, not to go there. But the cars just don't see it, and it's it's I, I you know it's it's a nightmare that's going to be happening. That could, and this is what the nightmare is: it's so preventable. What's the big issue with a stop sign on both directions? I seen it work. I you know I was able to get up on Jackson between on Kingsland and Manhattan and on Humboldt. I'm telling you, and we have other areas where we're successful, and people see cars. There's always going to be a couple of cars that don't matter what you put there, but I would say 98% of the drivers, they slow down. And that's all you need. That little slowdown saves people's lives. Thank you. William, when is that meeting tomorrow? And uh, six, uh, well, we used to have our meetings, 2.11 and so. <laughs> 6 p.m. as always. Got it. So I'll, I'll have an army of neighbors with Joanna. I, I wish I could. I wish I could attend. I have the board budget tomorrow. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 
But I know I'll have your support a little later. Okay, Doc. Thank you for your time. Thank you for letting me speak. Lloyd, I think you're up. Um, yeah, I mean, that. that's, yeah, thanks for mentioning that, William. I, I had no idea. Um, to switch gears a bit, uh, going back to Trisha's presentation, um, I couldn't find any information about her, like either of her orgs uh, online. And so I'm not sure if there's anything we can ask her to, to send over just because I want to make sure we do our due diligence as well. Um, you know, I did vote to, you know, say yes on letter, but, um, I, you know, I am curious as to why I can't really find anything about it. Um, and she did, you know, uh, read off a lot of numbers, right? I just want to make sure we can, like, just check some of those to make yeah. sure um, just cover our bases a bit. No, I think you're, I think you're completely right. Joanna, I could also forward you the email that came in um, that was oh, okay. sent to uh, yeah. the chair as well. I will Thank forward you. that email to you, to the whole committee, okay? Yes, yeah, sir. Sorry, just really quickly. Do we have an update on the 90th precinct? I thought there was someone new. They had a new CEO that started, I think, a few weeks ago at okay. the start of March and not able to make it tonight. Um, mm -hmm. But we have our next meeting April. This one was kind of, this one was, was a little last minute for other reasons. So we'll be back on track in April and they should be able to attend then. Perfect. And sorry, this is maybe just my misunderstanding or admin issues. Do we have a list of the dates for the rest of the meetings or do they, are they get, do they get planned periodically? Okay. It wasn't yeah. No problem. Um, and actually let me, I can, Joanna and I can send out the invite for the next one tomorrow or Friday by the end of the week. Thank you. And does, does this work for the committee to do it roughly every other month at the end of the month? That Tuesday, Wednesday that we've been sticking to. Okay. Awesome. And do, do we prefer to do it over WebEx than in person? Fine, either way. Okay. Jean is nodding her head, so we'll go with that. I would say either way. Okay. Uh, when we do the SLA, it is rather nice. You know, I, you feel like you're actually talking. <laughs> it, it is personal. But it is also nice, like today, to say, oh, look, I, I have so much going on that WebEx, you know, could also work. For me. So maybe we could alternate. We could alternate. Yeah. Um, and for for the next public safety meeting, end of April, um, OCM and, and DA are the, the two groups that, that should be attending. It's oh, like, what are those again? OCM, the Office of Cannabis Management, oh. uh, and uh, the DA, the district attorney. Okay. Gotcha. This is the last meeting we had. There was, there was a nice back and forth between that and one of the electeds and uh, an NYPD. Great. Uh, can and can I request that? I know that we've tried before to get sanitation to come through. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Let's keep trying on that. Yeah, and sanitation, and they, uh, you know, let's also do it because they are changing rules starting April first. So yeah, yeah. It's a great yeah. call. Yeah, and I know. I, yeah, yeah, no, and I know. Um, uh, pests and and vermin was something that we wanted to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Any other any other thoughts from you guys? Are you guys feeling okay and comfortable with all this? Very well organized team meeting. Thank you. Esther, you you good? Yeah, I'm good. I, I'm happy also the Zoom and like maybe, I don't know, once a once a quarter or something once every three months, I don't know, in person or something as well. It'd be great. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Cool. So I guess we can wrap for tonight. Thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you guys. You. Bye.